We have a lot to cover today. Right now I'm sitting at my vanity area slash desk area. I just got it about a couple weeks ago. You probably saw it on my Instagram, right? Yeah. All right, so uh, I'm just gonna start off with this Lancer SPF 30, and it's a liquid sunblock, which you guys know I have been using the Shiseido one for probably five years since I was a youngin. Um, but I'm always on the hunt for new liquid sunblocks. And um, I reviewed a couple from Octoly before, I think the Coors one, but I actually think this one is really lightweight and moisturizing. And the fragrance could be better, but I think I'm just a little too uh, used to the Shiseido one and I'm a little bit biased. My one qualm about this is that it does leave you feeling extra moisturized or in some cases oily so I feel like if you have oily skin this would not do too well on your skin it's a good product I really don't have anything negative to say about it other than that I think it would be not so suitable for people with oily skin while I let that all set I have a couple packages that I want to unbox in front of you guys today I have no idea who this is from My mom for my birthday, even though my birthday is in February, bought me on Black Friday an iPad Pro so I could um, use it as a tablet because my Wacom tablet, Wacom, Wacom tablet, um, is just not doing it for me. So she bought me an iPad Pro. Thanks, mom. And I know you're watching this, so it is here. Awesome. I'm so excited. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So this next one is iHerb. So I bought these all natural makeup wipes. Uh, probably like three months ago and I've used the whole thing. They smell really natural and they erase beautifully. They erase makeup so well. So I picked it up two of them and I never usually do this. I never overstock. At the Oh, and another thing about iHerb is that it actually has Korean beauty products. They just recently um, started doing that. So I got this Petite Fee Black pearl and gold hydrogel eye patches and they're just um, eye masks like that. Yogi immune support tea. I love tea and I love supporting my immune system. <laughs> Got Miracle Rice. I've seen Blog Lotties talk about these so hmm, that's kind of gross that I left them in here but I think it should be okay, right? This Cozarx, I think that's how you say it, um, Snail All-in-One Cream. Cozarx is a new Korean beauty brand that I've been wanting to try for ages because I hear it's highly effective. So I also got um, the white power, Whitening Power Essence. I had Power Liquid from Cozarx. I'm gonna talk about these later, but they're the pimple patches from Cozarx and I'm gonna talk about these later, they're amazing. Sum 37 Miracle Rose Cleansing Stick and I just heard amazing things about this too. So I wanted to try it out. Got some tea, got some noodles, uh, everything I need in life. I recently picked up the Luminous Silk Foundation by Giorgio Armani. This stuff is amazing. It is quite pricey. It is the investment, but it feels like you're wearing nothing. It genuinely feels like you're not wearing foundation, which I love. And I'm in the color 5.75. Unfortunately, my skin has been breaking out lately because I've been going to sleep with just using this. I've been forgetting to go wash my face after and just falling asleep because I don't know, but um, yeah, now I've been really, really tight on my skincare regimen. Regimen? I'm just dotting this. And then, I'm gonna buff it in. Even though my skin's been breaking out, it still gives a really amazing finish. I love this stuff. I've heard so many amazing things about this foundation, and when I finally found it at Nordstrom, I was like, oh my god. This is the Touche Clot Radiant. Concealer and this is a product that I've heard so much about in the beauty community and I've always wanted to try and I picked it up from Octoly, which is basically just a um, Online marketplace kind of where creators can just Review beauty products. I like that. It's very brightening, but I'm not too sure how I feel about this brush tip Click applicator. I don't know if it's too sanitary But I really do like the formula of it and the color match despite me looking online for this actually fit pretty well and I think I'm in a uh, It doesn't say what color I am and by the way today I'm using the same brush set that I talked about before my get ready with me. Do you ever have those days where you feel like you're so ugly that even makeup can't even help you? That's how I've been feeling lately. <laughs> and that's not me fishing for compliments. I do not want anyone to be like, oh, you're never ugly. 
watch now I'm gonna get oh my god you're always ugly comments <laughs> I'm gonna set everything and this is just the hyaluronic hydro powder from by Terry I also got this from Octoly ages ago so as you guys can tell I've been using Octoly quite frequently and um, there'll be a link down below if you want to sign up for it but this isn't sponsored yesterday I went shopping with my friend Diego and we went to Sephora and we went to Barnes & Noble and I picked up two books and a lot of you have been asking me what books do I read and if I would ever do a video but I picked up Sylvia Plath's The Bell Jar which I've been meaning to read for ages and ages and then um, this is Paulo Colo's The Alchemist which has also been on my list forever and Diego actually let me borrow this so um, I started this one and I just got this one, but I want to start both at the same time um, But I will let you know how these go. What am I trying to do? Oh, I think you want to contour So what do you guys think of this series title a lot of you on Twitter came up? Is that my hair or is that bronzer? Ah? Okay, a lot of you sent in awesome um, puns or names or alliterations for the title So I thought the AM with Amy was really cute and I really liked it This won't always go up in the morning. I mean ideally it would um, But it will always be filmed in the morning. So look bad on camera mm. I'm gonna just blend it out ah. <laughs> Anyways, okay, I think it's a little bit better Is it? This probably smells like play-doh Hopefully it'll be more conducive to me sitting down and doing more to check Get Ready With Me's because for some reason you guys seem to like it. I hope you play this in the background when you're doing something. I'm going to make them pretty long. I personally like having long long videos playing in the background and I like um, doing the dishes and like folding laundry and just listening to someone talk. So if you're doing that right now, you're already on a great start. So all right, next we are going to highlight. I've been using this master strobing stick from Maybelline and and um, my high school best friend Sharon got this for me when I was going through a breakup and I thought it was so sweet because she said it was sold out everywhere and have I, tell, have I told this story before? Anyway, she told me it was sold out everywhere because everyone really liked it and it is amazing. It is so concentrated and pigmented and when I'm feeling like I want to blind people, I also pair it with the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Glow and yeah. <laughs> um, and... I feel like because I started breaking out this year, I think, and becoming more insecure about my skin, I really started to um, enjoy and appreciate the art of skin makeup. Because as you guys know, I didn't use foundation and I didn't contour before. I didn't even use blush. I just recently started using blush like two weeks ago. Um, and. I really love it. I think I like doing the face makeup more than... No, no. I still love doing eye makeup. I have monolids, so I have a very large canvas um, for eye makeup, but eye makeup will always be my favorite. But I've definitely loved um, doing highlight contour and blush and stuff like that. I actually do it before my eye makeup now. I'm also going to use a new product on my eyes and this is great for on the go if you're super low maintenance like me and you just want to throw something on your lids and you're out the door. Um, this is the bronze garnet for green eyes, which I don't have green eyes. It's a color chameleon. It looks like this. Um, but it's basically just like a eyeshadow stick. It's super creamy um, and I find that it doesn't crease but also I don't have wrinkly eyelids <laughs> um, or greasy eyelids. I have very dry eyelids but I find that it um, holds really well. It doesn't smear, at least for me. And honestly I just apply this as if I had a black eye um, because all I really do is blend it. I saw this product on Sunbeam's Jess and I don't know if she has green eyes, but it looks so amazing on her. And I immediately went to Nordstrom and I just picked it up. Um, but I really like the product. It's super low maintenance. Um, I really do just black my eyes out though. I'm gonna just blend that out with a fluffy blending brush. 
Actually, most of the time I like to do my eyeliner and then blend it out and add more definition. So I'm going to do that right now. By the way, I'm using today all of these brushes and these are, these are, I think it's 15 brushes and this is all cruelty free synthetic brushes and um, I talked about this last time I get ready with me so I was excited when Vanity Planet was like, you know what, we want to sponsor you again for using these brushes and I was like, okay, I already have them so let's do it. Um, but as you guys know, I use literally this Kabuki brush and this fan brush on a daily basis and I've washed both of them and they haven't shed which is pretty amazing because a lot of my kabuki brushes because they are so dense they do shed a lot and I feel like the glues the glues the glue gets really loose over time um, but these are pretty amazing quality for the price and I feel like these are actually really great for traveling all you have to do is roll it out and this is also vegan you can get this brush set it's 15 pieces for $30 with my coupon code I think it's youth70 down below I'm gonna have a link so please check it out and they don't streak or shed on your face which is super important with synthetic brushes at least if you like and they stand out to me when I uh, wash them because I can actually see if there's any residue on the handle when you're washing your brushes please make sure please 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 make sure to wash the handles of your brushes because um, that's actually probably the dirtiest part of your brush I feel like and it gets so neglected um, and this is actually made from birch wood so it's uh, really easy for me to clean and see what I'm actually getting off. Also this hand movement. I'm so dirty. So I did go to Sephora and um, I actually only, I went in trying to pick up quite a few things but I just decided to get my old trusty and true Kat Von D tattoo eyeliner and um, if I talked about the Tooth House one ages ago, that one is not in fact a dupe for this. That one wears a lot less longer. It fades really quickly and it rubs off I feel like. This one has a lot longer staying power which makes a lot of sense as to why this is um, double the price. So I'm sorry if I told you about the Tooth House. Um, it's just similar in the mechanics of the actual brush but the product itself is not similar. So. I gotta give it to Kat Von D, but I'm gonna just do my eyeliner. I started doing makeup on my friend Diego and he has beautiful eyes. Um, they're obviously a double eyelid um, and it is so different doing makeup on him but um, I definitely do have to say that I love monolids because there is so much to work with and there's so many, like this space is so much. Um, but I will say that it has not been always like this. I've always... Um, I've always kind of hated the way that my eyes look and I think that is just because I come from a Korean American background where if you guys know Koreans um, like Koreans from South Korea are very into beauty and um, I feel like vanity is a huge thing there where um, double eyelid surgery and nose surgery and all types of different surgery are very commonplace because um, that's just the culture you know they're going after um, the ultimate beauty and having porcelain white skin which is why I love Korean beauty skincare or which is why I love Korean skincare um, oh my gosh I love this I learned too much hold on and growing up I used to always by several family members get told, oh Amy, when you graduate or for your birthday, like, do you want to get eyelid surgery? Do you want to get nose surgery? Um, because we can make that happen. Like, I'll give it to you as your birthday gift. And um, my grandma said that, my mom said that, my mom's frequently said that. And um, like, I think growing up that really messed with my self-esteem. And I don't want to get emotional about it, but um, you know, it's, it's an everyday struggle for me to accept the way that I look. Um, as, I, as I look at myself now with like two black eyes, I should blend. Where's my fluffy brush? So it's always been a struggle to really accept my monolids. And um, I do, like I'm not gonna lie, I do think being on camera all the time, it is really hard for you to accept the way you look. And I do think that if I were ever to, if ever my career, which I don't plan it to, but if ever my career went towards the film and television um, direction, like in Hollywood, I actually do think I would get probably a lot of cosmetic surgery done just because 
it would be really hard to see me on, you know, like billboards or just national television looking the way that I do. Um, but in general, I'm so against, and for me personally, I'm so against the idea of altering the way you look just to fit a societal standard. And what I mean by that is that I feel like a lot of beauty standards today are set by Euro-American features, meaning a lot of people want like wider skin or um, to look more Western. And I personally don't think that's the only type of beauty there is in this world. Like despite your eyelid shape, despite you know your body shape, your skin color, there's so many types of beauty. And I guess I'm just so opposed to the idea of molding yourself into this one idea of beauty. Um, and a lot of people think like, oh, if I want to do surgery, let me do it. And I totally think that if you want to do surgery, you should totally do it. If it makes you happy, you should 100% do whatever makes you happy. But I think thinking about the underpinnings of cosmetic surgery in this day and age really, really gets to me in the sense that we're not, like, are you thinking about why you want to look this way? Like, why do you want blue eyes? Or why do you want bigger eyes? Like, why do you want blonde hair, right? Um, when there are so many ranges of colors, when there are so many ranges of colors, of eyes, of hair, of skin tones, of body shapes that are so beautiful, what we see in traditional media, magazines, and, you know, everything, we're just inundated with this one idea of beauty. Um, and I don't know, I guess I've always been critically analyzing that. If I could point out two things that I really don't like about myself, it would be my nose and my eyes, and my eyes would always come first, and that is literally just because I'm Asian. Like, I'm Asian and I look the way that, you know, most Asians do. You know, a lot of Asians have monoliths, but again, a lot of Asians have um, Euro-American features as well, just naturally, and I think that's beautiful too, but I just think we should celebrate all types of shapes and sizes, I guess. From a young age, I've always been kind of conditioned to this idea that cosmetically altering my face is super accessible and easy. It's weird, like, growing up thinking, like, yeah, I can go, you know, cut my eyelid to look a certain way anytime I want. I just gotta ask for it. And um, I'm 100% I'm for accepting the way you are as is. Um, because it's an external force that is typically telling you black from white or ugly from pretty. And I feel like we should all be free thinkers and understand like what you think is beautiful is beautiful. I have had monoliths and I've always dealt with the idea that I'm ugly because of it. And I will, you know, like if you if you really get to know me, I really do think I'm ugly because of my eyes, which is insane because it's just like, girl, it's just a freaking eyelid, you know what I mean? Um, but <clears throat> I'm getting kind of emotional talking about this, but if you're out there and you're watching this and you have monolids and, or you have double eyelids or you have a funky nose or something that deviates from the norm, you are beautiful and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Sorry if you can hear the music upstairs, my neighbor is really loud. He plays like loud trance music. But I just want you to know, you're beautiful as is and that's just something that I really wish and needed to hear when I was growing up. Anyways, um, I do think that you should do whatever makes you happy. Um, and a lot of times, accepting yourself is really fucking hard, especially in today's society. But for me, I just constantly make sure I'm critically thinking about and analyzing why I want to look a certain way. Take a little bit of this, dab it on, and smoke out that crayon liner. Ooh, I'm really liking this look. Another thing that is so crazy about beauty standards changing and constantly being constructed by society is when I was younger, thin lips were so in style. Oh shoot, what happened? Thin lips were so, so in style, and I remember, I don't know if you guys know Hannah Beth, but um, she was like a Buzznet blogger with like Audrey Ketching, and I thought she was so beautiful. She had the thinnest lips ever, and I remember I would look inside, I would look in the mirror, and I would go, like I would literally try to make my lips smaller, and I always thought about getting lip reduction. And now I'm 23, almost 23, I'm turning 23 in February, but um, now everyone wants big lips and everyone's getting lip injections or Juvederm, and especially in LA where I live. Now I'm like, I don't, I don't ever need to get surgery, like my lips are in style and they're cool, and that just really opens up my mind and really keeps me informed about these decisions 
about changing the way you look during a current time. Ugh. Anyways, does this make any sense? I hope so. So I'm gonna use the Benefit Their Real Mascara. The wand itself is really spiky and plasticky, I feel like. Yeah, I do like the formula of this. It's a bit wetter than the uh, Better Than Sex formula, which I think um, actually, in my opinion, dries out too fast in the tube. Overall, I like this formula, but I don't know if it really stands out um, compared to all the other mascaras I've tried. I'm gonna do brows. Now, this has been my favorite blush. It's the Air Blush from Marc Jacobs, and it's in um, Flesh and Fantasy. And looking at this color just from in the product, it does not look like I would like it, but I love it so much. Last thing I want to do is a bold lip, maybe? It might be too much, but we'll see. So this is the YSL Vinyl Cream. The color itself is really cherry red for what I'm normally used to. I usually go for a plum. The problem with these is that I'm really bad at applying them because I feel like the brush is really big and I feel like if you had thinner lips than I do, like, it would be really hard to apply. Um, but the formula itself, I really like. It's, um, it stays on pretty long. And the color looks so amazingly bright and vibrant in person. Um, I don't know if it's picking up on camera because I can't really tell. Uh, actually, I'm starting, I think this color is starting to grow on me, but I do like the formula of it. I'm, I think I'm more of a fan of glossy or cream formulas because I really hate the matte trend. It's been so drying lately and it makes your lips look all crusty and so high maintenance, I feel like. So. Excuse me, I really like this product. Yes, this is my look. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you need to reach me, call me, beat me at Amy Vagabond with two Ds on Instagram, Twitter, and yeah, that's it, because my Snapchat is a different one. Anyways, I love you guys. Bye. The aftermath.